Hello, everyone. Welcome again to our weekly devotions. I'm Pastor David Shub at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend. So my crazy idea was that for devotions throughout the summer, I would look at Bible passages that have the word summer in them. Some may have something to do with our summer lives, some may not, but I think they will all take us somewhere interesting. Today comes from the sixth chapter of the book of Proverbs, and for many years I heard about these verses in different ways through various stories I have heard. The verses themselves read, Go to the ant, you lazy bones. Consider its ways and be wise without having any chief or officer or ruler. It prepares its food in summer, gathers its sustenance in harvest. How long will you lie there, O oh lazy bones, when you will rise from your when will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed warrior. As I was growing up, I heard this passage first in the form of an Aesop's fable, and later in other ways. But first, let's look at Aesop. He wrote this story. One bright day in late autumn, a family of ants were bustling about in the warm sunshine, drying out the grain they had stored up during the summer. When a starving grasshopper, his fiddle under his arm, came up and humbly begged for a bite to eat. What? cried the ants in surprise. Haven't you stored anything away for the winter? What in the world were you doing all last summer? I didn't have time to store up any food, whined the grasshopper. I was so busy making music that before I knew it, the summer was gone. The ants shrugged their shoulder in disgust. Making music were you, they cried. Very well now. Now dance. And they turned their backs on the grasshopper and went on with their work. There's also versions of that same story in which the grasshopper comes in the winter and knocks at their door and asks for food, and the ants slam the door in the poor grasshopper's face. The moral is, of this particular Aesop's fable, there's a time for work and a time for play. And so we tell our children to urge them to be diligent and do the work they're supposed to do. This, I believe, was also the intent of the passage in Proverbs, to call people to realize that it requires industry and work. And if you don't do that, then you will find yourself poor and on the edge of survival. The writer of the, of the book of Proverbs reflected the belief of their culture that everyone needed to work to gain both their living and the blessing of God. This tradition also, however, leads people to say to those who are starving in the world, if you are hungry, it's your own fault. If you had worked harder, if you had been doing the things you were supposed to do, then you wouldn't be in this particular state. And somehow, that often seems wrong to me because I know it's not always true. But there was an alternative to Aesop's story. Um, It's also, strangely enough, ascribed to to Aesop, in which the ant was seen as a bad example. Um, This appears as a counterfable and is numbered 166 in the Perry Index of Aesop's Fables. It relates that the ant was once a man who was always busy farming. Not satisfied with the results of his own labor, he plundered his neighbor's crops at night. This angered the king of the gods who turned him into what is now an ant. Yet, even though the man has changed his shape, he did not change his habit, and to this day goes around the fields gathering the fruits of other people's labor, storing them up for himself. The moral given the fable in old Greek sources was that it's easier to change an appearance than to change one's moral nature. Close to what we say when we say, a leopard can't change its spots. I hope this one isn't true, because then we're probably all in a lot of trouble. Our selfishness that is characterized in so much of the world's actions will never change, and in the end, all we can ever hope for is constant struggle and pain. 
But when I was growing up, there was a cartoon that told the story in yet another way. The story goes pretty much along the same lines at the beginning, but in the end has the ants satisfied when the grasshopper shows up at their door in winter that he's truly repentant. They take pity on him and bring him into the hill. He plays music for them throughout the winter, and while the grasshopper learns a lesson about hard work and responsibility, the ants learn to have fun and loosen up because neither extreme is healthy. It then becomes a story of compassion and of learning together and sharing the gifts we have. I love that cartoon. That one makes sense to me. And then as I was preparing for this devotion, I ran across another piece about this particular story. It went like this. A mother of nine-year-old boy, Mark, received a phone call in the middle of the afternoon. It was the teacher from her son's school. Mrs. Smith, something unusual happened today in your son's third grade class. Your son did something that surprised me so much that I thought you should know about it immediately. Mother seldom wants to hear from their child's teacher in the middle of the day, so the mother was uneasy and nervous, but went immediately to see the teacher. What now? The mother wondered. The teacher continued, When she got there, I've been teaching for many years, and nothing like this has happened until now. This morning, I was teaching a lesson on creative writing. And as I always do, I tell the story of the ant and the grasshopper. The ant works hard all summer and stores up plenty of food, but the grasshopper plays all summer and does no work. Then winter comes. The grasshopper begins to starve because he has no food, so he hops to the ant's house and begins to beg Please, Mr. Ant, you have so much food. Please let me eat, too. Now, boys and girls, your job is to write the ending to the story, the teacher told them. Your son, Mark, raised his hand. Teacher, may I draw a picture? Well, yes, Mark, if you like. You may draw a picture, but first, you must write the ending of the story. The papers came in, as in all the years past, most of the students said that the ants shared their food through the winter, and both the ants and the grasshopper lived. As always, a few children said, the ants said, no, Mr. Grasshopper, you should have worked in the summer and not played. Now I have just enough food for myself. So the ant lived, and the grasshopper died. But your son ended the story in a way different from any other child ever. He wrote, So the ant gave all of his food to the grasshopper. The grasshopper lived through the winter, but the ant died. And he drew this picture. And she showed the mother at the bottom of the page that Mark had drawn three crosses. Jesus gave up his life so that we might live eternally. Maybe the words of Proverbs were meant to tell us the right way to live, but for me, they become a question of how should we live in a world where some have so much and some do not? Some have enough because of their hard work. Some have little because of their lack of effort. But most have little because the world is an unfair place. What then should we do in the face of our plenty and the need of others. Especially, what do we do as Christians in the world? What do you think should be the end of the story? Let us pray. Lord, in the midst of the inequity of the world, help us know what to do when we encounter those who are in need. Amen. Well, I can't say much, but think about these endings. Which one do you choose? Have a good week.